So in my video about the trans genocide, I said in a sort of offhand comment that uh, the fall of democracy in the U.S. was at least uh, for a brief time averted by the fact that in the midterms, um, people came out in waves against election-denying extremists. Now, there was a comment I, I received on that video that said something to the effect of, if you have to vote for a party to save democracy, democracy is already dead. And I agree wholeheartedly with this statement. Um, but I don't know if I would necessarily come to the same conclusions as the person who, who wrote that comment. I'm not going to speak for them. Like, in a broad sense, like if I'm talking about my ideal world, I want direct democracy. I want small communities. I want a, a constitution based on the blockchain that cannot be edited, where the people are empowered to make the laws in their society, and uh, where there is such a level of decentralization that um, people, uh, if they don't like what's happening in the society, they're free to simply opt out to other uh, communities that more adequately reflect their values and their beliefs. Um, of course, all of these communities would trade with one another and would have, you know, uh, connectivity through uh, simultaneously decentralized and centralized um, means of um, economic uh, expansion and um, security. So, like, at the same time that you would have worker cooperatives, you know, um, organizing their workplace on directly democratic lines or, you know, perhaps democratic lines that are uh, a little bit more top down, you know, maybe a scenario where like 60% of the board advisors are elected by the workers or um, most things are voted on, but you still have like a foreman overseeing the basic functions of, of the workplace. Um, maybe you also have some like, well, in this kind of society, you wouldn't really have the state in the way that we traditionally see it, but you know, some more traditionally run companies that are uh, simply oversaw by the like broader local government and community um, that, uh, you know, function more as co corporations that are like, um, you know, more like centrally, centrally planned by, by the local government, um, that, you know, you have all of these institutions kind of coordinating with one another in this, you know, small, directly democratic society. Um, and, uh, their, their main goal is to serve the community in which they operate. But that doesn't mean, you know, they're not communicating with other outlying communities um, and also trading with them and uh, existing, you know, somewhat for, for the function of ensuring their economic stability. These are like loosely connected networks of local governments that are all sort of coordinating with one another for not entirely common ends, but similar ends, we'll say. Uh, this is sort of how I envision, like, my ideal society. Lots of little, uh, directly democratic enclaves of people. But, that is not the world we live in. And, while I would consider something like that to be, like, real democracy, you know, the democracy that I'm really fighting for, that, that I really want to see, I understand that, you know, to some extent, it, it's impractical to, you know, advocate for such a thing. So, in the real world, where we have a multi-party system, how do we go about the problem 
of voters who want to elect anti-democratic leaders, who just want to elect these populists who want to do nothing but chip away at all of our civil rights and freedoms until either there is no right to vote or voting becomes, uh, you know, a, a rubber stamp on the party line that is entirely symbolic. It, the voters themselves hold no real power. You know, what do we do about preventing such a scenario like, say, what happened in Nazi Germany, where anti-democratic leaders were elected by the popular public? Well, I think modern-day Germany themselves have a pretty good solution to this problem, uh, and that is the banning of far-right and far-left parties that have an anti-democratic bent. If you're on the populist left or the populist right in Germany and um, your political program involves um, the chipping away at democracy, uh, or if you're a political group agitating for explicitly anti-democratic ideas, um, these are all things that are banned in uh, Germany today. You cannot organize on these lines, you cannot agitate on these lines, you cannot vote for parties that believe in these things. I think that's the solution, because if you think about like the paradox of tolerance, now the basic idea, the paradox of tolerance, is um, you cannot live in a society that, that tolerates the rights of minorities, the existence of minorities, the rule of law, and democracy, while simultaneously tolerating authoritarian, anti-democratic, and, and racist ideas and uh, institutions. The, these things cannot coexist with one another. And so, in order to ensure that democracy survives, you actually have to stamp out these elements of the society. In that sense, it, freedom ain't free. You cannot, you cannot live in a free and democratic country without some regulations on what people are allowed to say, at least in an organized capacity, I'm not talking about going full Canada over here, um, I, or, um, and this is the, the um, area in which I am the most concerned, uh, what you can org organize a political party around. You should not be able to have a democracy where parties can be voted in or politicians can be voted in who agitate around explicitly anti-democratic ideas or, or rhetoric that reflects that. There should be a constitutional authority overseeing um, the candidates running and, and investigating these sort of anti-democratic elements to ensure that um, the, the democracy remains stable and also having that constitutional authority, you know, look over things like civil rights cases and, and things of that nature. Um, this is how you ensure a tolerant and democratic society. That isn't to say, you know, we can't disagree. You can have as fiscally conservative or as right-wing parties as you want or as left-wing parties as you want. Um, fiscally irresponsible, let's say. Go all over the spectrum. As long as, as long as you don't dissolve democracy in the process. Now, you might say, Osaka Syndrome, well, how do you measure, measure such a thing? It gets a little ambiguous. I think when you, when you get to the left, like, there's some debate about, you know, what actually is anti-democratic and what's not on the left, uh, simply because a lot of those ideas are, like, largely theoretical, and uh, a lot of them haven't been tried. I can see um, left-wingers, like, having this constitutional authority used against them, having the system be abused a little bit by, like, I don't know, like a, a, a 
you know, capital hungry class of some sort. But um, I think if we look at the German example, um, while there have been like cases of uh, them certainly abusing their power against lefties, who I, I think genuinely weren't anti-democratic, for the most part, this has not occurred, right? Like, I think, I, I think even if this was like a widespread problem, it would be a worthy trade-off if it ensured that fascistic elements would be suppressed um, in the country. And uh, red fascism is still a thing uh, for as many of us that don't like to admit it. It is still a thing to to have fascism with with a, a red flag attached to it. So that would basically be my solution. Now, I'm a little hesitant about the solution because, again, we're talking about a liberal democratic context. Once again, I'm an anarchist. At the very beginning of this video, I described anarchism to you, basically, or my conception of, of anarchism. Um, if you enlarge a state, what's the state going to do? The state is going to not stop until it has eaten away at every institution in its path that is preventing it from enlarging its power. I think having a constitution, having separations of, of powers, and uh, having a highly political and educated populace that um, is holding the state to account, these are all good things that in the long term help uh, shore up support for democracy, help um, back democracy and its longevity, in, in the liberal context, but I don't know, or rather, I don't think it's ultimately enough. Um, like, or, or rather, I don't know if, slash, I don't think it's enough. Um, I think the states, like, when we're talking about what the best we can do in the context of a state, we're really talking about, like, a super unsteady beast, a an animal that is, it's bound to eat everything in its path in, in a desperate attempt to just like become bloated and fat um, until it, it becomes so big that it's out of control, you know, like until the liberals become fascist, basically. And uh, that procurement of state power is something I'm highly skeptical of and and quite scared of. I mean, I, I saw it firsthand with getting kicked out of Canada. Um, and so, like, while I propose this solution, and I think it's basically the best we can get in a liberal democratic context, um, I think it's worthwhile to still argue for... Uh, these small decentralized democratic communities get your friends together build a village of like a hundred people grow your own food and uh live outside of society um you can build whatever kind of world you want to there and uh send zines to people behind bars um and young, impassioned generations of people who want to see a change in the world to inspire them to build their own communities of a similar vein until we see them springing up all over the place, um, get in connection with each other, and uh, build an alternative economy in place of the old one. Um, you know, join a labor union, spread these sorts of ideas, um, get the get the labor movement in in cahoots with uh, this sort of direct democracy I'm talking about. Um, we need to be building alternative institutions, uh, alternative systems of power to serve as a backup in. Uh, the advent of an authoritarian state, which
which I think is ultimately inevitable under um, a, uh, a state-based system, um, or a status system, I don't know why I said state-based, uh, and under capitalism. Um, and these are two things that I, I think simply need to be done away with. The state and capitalism, they gotta go. But, while we have these two things, um, I think I think it's it's best to create institutions uh, through which liberal democracy, at the very least, um, can be ensured for as long as possible. 